as far as I'm concerned, I'm here to do a job. And uh, the 12 years may tell in one sense as far as Bruno's concerned, because you'll see the inexperience that he is. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I have the strength, the size, and also the ability to beat him. I think the secret behind this fight is the, uh, the strength behind the, the two blokes who's going to go into the boxing ring on the night. Hey Joe, very hurt. Very light as the and if I put enough aggro on him, which I'm intending to do, I think the, the fight will be very one-sided. Barry, Barry wanted me to come in a bit later, like two days before the fight, and I said, no way, I can't create big enough problems that way. Yes, I'm going to knock Bruno out. His strong point is his mouth. He's got plenty of mouth. <laughs> come on, mate, come on. It's uh, nice to see the big man arrive in the UK. After four years, it's been four years since he's been here. Long and hard negotiations, but at last he's here. So now just to build up for the fight. Very much I'm looking forward to it. It's been waiting five years, you know, like the slagging down and all them sort of things. I'm looking to it very much. I'm not a Muhammad Ali. I'm not going to wide-eyed and big mouth and shout off and say what I'm going to do and what I ain't going to do, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to get myself fit, mentally fit body fit and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do a good job. I believe that this fight will make history in England as far as two domestic fighters are concerned. Um, as you all know, I've been after Bruno for about five and a half to six years. Um, it's going to be, I believe, one of the greatest fights this country has seen for a very long time. The only thing that annoyed me about uh, Frank Bruno in the recent week is that we had a uh, story coming over to Australia where he actually accused me of being a chicken for not facing him. Well, I just want to tell Frank that this chicken has come to roost, so I'll be waiting. He's a wise man up in his head with his talking and everything, but when you're 37, it's, you know what I mean? You can't mess about with um, boxing when you're 37, I think, anyway. I just don't think he protects himself sufficiently to avoid somebody like me who's an old crafty dog. And, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, I've come here to win. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, there'll be a lot of right-handers thrown by me, and one of them will connect. There's no question about it. Because I've, you know, I've, uh, I've had enough of the critics saying I can't punch, and yet people like Dino Dennis will prove otherwise, and people like Winston Allen who proved otherwise, and uh, there's a few <laughs> others down the road who I think total somewhere in the region of about 30 to 40 opponents who went down, so ask them. And I'm not e even interested in what he's got to say. All I'm interested is when the 24th comes, I'm going to do a good job. Bruno has done what he's been asked to do. Unfortunately, he may not have come up to the expectations of the critics and the fans. I went through that several years ago and still am, most probably. But uh, I think the beauty about this fight is that uh, we've got two naturals. Both of us are six foot four. Uh, both of us are about 16 and a half to 17 stone. So there'll be a lot of thumping on the 24th. If you have a look at Bugner after 20 years in the ring, I don't think he's got a mark on him. A fella can fight. When did it all start, boxing, for you? 1966, 21 years ago. I had uh, one season as an amateur, and then I turned professional at 17, which made me the youngest heavyweight to turn pro. And, um, in fact, it'll be 20 years, I believe, on the 24th of October that I've been professional, so it's a long time. Looking forward to the fight, what are your thoughts at this point? Well, I've been after Bruno now for nearly six years, so it's, uh, it's a fight that's been brewing inside me for a long time. I've had uh, some very successful wins under my belt since thinking of Bruno, so uh, the fight will be uh, not an easy one, but it'll be one that uh, I've been dreaming of and uh, hoping for for a long time, so it'll make it that much more exciting and uh, that much more determination on my on my part because you know i've been taking a lot of uh, flack from the british press and i've had enough of it well before we talk about that why has this fight been so important to you well you know because unfortunately for something like uh, 15 16 years i've i've been living the life of hell as far as the british press were concerned and uh, you know every time i performed well in my opinion they said i was not performing well Obviously, you can't, can't sort of uh, please everybody all the time, but, but in their eyes, I could never please them at all. So I just got sick and tired of it. And when this young man came along, Bruno, who they praised as one of the greatest fighters Britain's ever had, I just got my back up, you know, I said, that's it.
Why do you think the press have been gunning for you? Well, I think the reason for that was has been mainly because of, uh, of maybe that I've been very outspoken about the previous heavyweights of this country. And, uh, you know, in this country, if you happen to be a winner, they don't like you. They like, they like to have good losers in this country. And it's very sad because, you know, you've got some great athletes in this country and uh, they just seem to knock them as soon as they make the grade. I mean, you know, there's, there's Daley Thompson, who I think is one of the greatest uh, all-round athletes this country has ever produced. Uh, he got a hell of a thrashing uh, by the press. And, uh, of course, there's Ian Botham, another great cricketer that just can't seem to do anything right because, you know, the scum of the press will always uh, knock him. And uh, I happen to be in that uh, category. And there's, there's a few others, you know, Faldo, you know, the golfer and so on. So I'm just, we're just one of the bad bunch. Have you been doing any special training at all? Well, I've been working very, very hard. Um, I've been doing a lot of pad work, which builds your stamina up, a lot of running. And since we've been here, which has been nearly three weeks, we've averaged nearly 50 rounds of sparring. So I've been very, uh, very well prepared for this one. And you've lost some weight as well, haven't you? Well, even at 37, you can lose weight. <laughs> but, but not too much to, uh, to make myself uh, ill or, or take some strength away. So I've been very careful. Now, in the past, you've actually been described as quite a cool customer in the ring and, and even been described as boring, perhaps, boring boxing. Are you going to be uh, very aggressive on Saturday or are you going to uh, that, be that cool customer? A lot depends on the situation, I mean, how it arises. I mean, as far as uh, the boxing side goes, I mean, uh, again, that, the boring side obviously has been, you've been reading some of the clippings. Mm -hmm. So some of my fellow journey, jur journalist friends, you know, out there who've been always the you know, the big mouths and the... And the oh, anyway, I don't really want to harp on about... No, the fight's going to be dominated by me, I'm pretty sure of it. Bruno's got one way of fighting, and that's left, right, left, right, you know. I mean, you know, if he was in the army, he'd do very well. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, um, at 37, I've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Are you worried about the age thing at all? Do you think it's going to feature? None whatsoever, no. I mean, I, th I fought three uh, world-rated guys in the last year, uh, I'll repeat the names, just in case somebody out there has forgotten. Tillis, Bay and Greg Page, former World Heavyweight Champion. And, and you know, at 37, it didn't hurt me at all to uh, go the full distance with them. And I'm glad I did, because it's prepared me just that much more better for the Bruno fight. Mm -hmm. What about all the hype that's accompanying it? Well, believe me, without Joe Bugner, there'd not, there'd not be 30-odd thousand people coming to the fight. I don't think Bruno can fill a... Uh, a stadium of the size of the Albert Hall, um, and, and it doesn't matter who he fought. So um, I think without Joe Bugner, it'd be a very limited uh, amount of people there. You said that you'll be able to finish the business within ten rounds. Eight rounds. Eight rounds. Don't put two extra rounds on it. <laughs> it's going to be eight rounds. How do you think it is going to end? I don't think it'll go the distance. I feel very confident about that. One of us will not make it to the twelfth round. Now, in the last few days running up to the fight, what training in particular are you going to be doing? Well, what I'm hoping to do is just to sort of taper down now because it's very important that the last three days are going to be uh, just sort of going over a few moves and, uh, and just sort of um, just limber up, really. It's not, it's not, there's no more serious work. The sparring's been over for two days now, so you just really dig, just get some strength back into the old body. Right. And you say that it might be a good time to retire after it. What will you go on to do then, do you think? Well, don't take me literally. I mean, I may have another 10 years under my belt. I mean, uh, that's just something I feel at the moment. Um, I mean, if the Tyson people don't come up with a world title fight, then I will seriously consider retiring. But, uh, you know, they haven't really definitely said no yet. Although they've been opening their mouths as far as, we're not going to give Bugner a chance, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. And so, I think Yanks are very big at uh, yapping. But uh, I think when it comes down to dollars and cents, they tend to change their mind. In all the run-up to this fight, you've been, uh, you've been opening your mouth, if you like, and being very vocal in press conferences. Not vocal. So I've been positive. What, what they don't seem to like in this country is that when you say what you think, and, that, and it's a damn shame. I mean, if, if there were more people like Maggie Thatcher out there, I think this country would be on its feet far greater than it is at the moment. Unfortunately, one lady runs this country. And as soon as you open your mouth, they, they tr everybody tries to put their foot into your mouth. And uh, I've, had this, I've had this problem for 20 years. And uh, it's sad. Uh, everybody says, why do I say so much? Because there's nobody else out there who dares say anything else. And uh, it sickens me to find out all these people are hiding behind closed doors and behind women's skirts. And you guys out there, open your traps. <laughs> It sounds as though you're going to be fighting an awful lot more other things than uh, Frank Bruno when you go into that room. I'm fighting the whole of Fleet Street. Now that's for the books and the record.
first time I fought in a pair of boxing gloves was when I was eight, when my dad bought me a pair of boxing gloves because I wanted to start boxing. Yeah. And um, I got sent to a boarding school when I was about 10, 11, so I stopped boxing then. Then I took it up seriously when I was about 16. What was the attraction for it then? Um, I just wanted to channel my aggression into something like boxing or athletics or something, but there was more money in boxing, so I stuck to boxing. But in fact, you've been compared as being, or you, in fact, you've been described as being the son of Cooper. That you're the Mr. Nice of British boxing. Am I? Yeah. I don't think I'm. Um, what's name? The, the 24th. I'll be nice. I won't be nice at all. You're not going to be nice on Saturday. No, not nice one little bit. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of fighting talk a bit between the two of you. Yeah. Although it's been said that you are being the cool customer, that you're actually standing back and watching what's going on and that you're going to actually go in there and do the business on Saturday. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for and that's what I'm going to do, you know. Talking, it takes a, your name, well, what um, phrase do people use? It takes bricks to build houses or something like that. I'm not involved in all that um, hype and chat and all that ball, you know, I'm just interested in winning on Saturday. I mean, a lot of what Bugner's actually been saying has been centred around sort of vitriolic hatred that he's actually had of you personally. I'm yeah, just... I hate him as well, you know. Why? Um, I just don't like him, the things what he's been saying and things like that. I just don't like him at all. How are you training? How are you preparing for Saturday? Um, I'm training very well. I've been training for about, what, two months because I was training for a guy called Trevor Burbick. He pulled out and then I had a couple, about a week off and then this fight came ahead. And I've been training very well, you know, a lot of heels, a lot of sprints, ground exercises, a lot of sparring, a lot of speed ball, ground to ceiling, bag work, plenty of resting, walking, eating, going to the toilet. <laughs> and so, living. Yeah, living, living yeah. <laughs> is this something you're actually, is it something you're nervous about at all, Saturday? I am a little bit nervous because there's going to be about 40,000 people. This is the make or break fight for me as a lot of things because he's been slagging me down. So it is a little bit nervous, but I'm pretty cool, you know. My, my hands are very still. I feel very relaxed. Now, what about uh, if he comes on... In, uh, what about if he comes on in an aggressive way? Because his fighting style in the past has been somewhat more defensive. Yeah, I prefer him to come on aggressive because, what's the name, he's a defensive style, it's very awkward. But if he comes on sort of like aggressive, I, I would, that would suit me much more better. When you say it's awkward, what do you mean? Explain that to me. Well, you know, I mean, he goes in there to survive, and when a person goes in there to survive, he can make things, make you look very hor horrible and very ordinary. So when a person comes on aggressive, a man of 37, and as big as that, it's much more better coming on to you than rather running and tucking up and all that. But he says it's all going to be over by the eighth round. Um, yeah, but he's been talking so much that, what's the name, it was supposed to be the first round, now it's the eighth round, then it was the fifth round, so it's just all hype, you know? I don't even think he's going to last the fifth round until the eighth round, to be quite honest. What do you think is his weakest spot? Um, I wouldn't like to say that on the video, you know what I mean, what his weakest spot is. <laughs> what do you think I, is I his think he's strong, yeah. his strongest is his mouth. That sounds like brave talking again, though. What do you mean brave talking? That, that sounds like a bit of the hype that you've actually just... Uh, no, his strong point is his mouth. He's got plenty of mouth. <laughs> his strong point is a very experienced fighter and he's a pretty um, respectable fighter as well. Let's talk about the hype for a minute. Yeah. Do you enjoy the hype at all? Um, it's all part of the game, you know, it's all part of the experience, it's all part of show business, you know what I mean? I don't really get involved in the hype because that ain't my sort of style to get involved in slagging people down and running people down. But, you know what I mean, if it sells tickets, puts people's backsides on the seats, you get involved in the hype, you know? If you win on Saturday? No, not if, it's when I win. When you I've win? I've got to win, yeah. You've got to win? Yeah. So, when you've won mm. on Saturday, what happens then for you? I'm not too sure, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and see what happens from now. If you lose? Um, I don't think about losing, so I, I wouldn't really answer that question. And for the next couple of days now, or the next few hours, really, we're getting into hours now in the run-up to Saturday, mm. what are you going to be doing? Eating, resting, training, and I hope I won't be talking to people like you again. <laughs> <laughs> for the next Charming. couple of days. <laughs> nah, I'll just be resting and relaxing and saving all my energy until the night, the 24th.
Now, it's nice and serious, lads, please. Up to me. And on this one, just down here. Keep yeah. walking your way around, fellas. Keep walking your way around. Frank, 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 I've got Frank's coat on, you know, yeah? <laughs> keep me warm. Oh, look what they've got, powder. Is it eight rounds, Joe? Because I want to book a restaurant after it. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Eight, eight, is it? Excuse no, me for one second. No, it's just yes, we've got some private. Is it eight? Because I want to book a restaurant after I want to know what time. Yeah, eight, eight, eight. eight is a good time. Eight is <laughs> Because I've got a movie to go to later. Oh, <laughs> uh, we've got an interesting point, which I'll cover now. Uh, there's a dispute over the corners. Both boxers want to fight from the blue corner. Uh, we can't resolve the issue. It's uh, one of those things. So the, the way out of it is that there's going to be a toss-up for corners, which in fact will take place here on Sunday, the 18th, at 2.20, on the field before the Arsenal-Tottenham match. And uh, in fact, the toss-up will be made by the referee for that day, Mr John Martin. versus Joe Bugner, a three million pounds bonanza that's about to happen. How do you feel, Joe? I'm very excited. Uh, it's a big occasion, a lot of people out there, and uh, 
I'm, I'm ready to rumble. You're ready to rumble. What have you been doing all day today? Well, I've been taking it very easy. We had a lovely Italian meal up at the, uh, up at the middle of London, near Carnaby Street. So it was very nice. And then we went home. I had to lie down and got up about six and fought our way through the traffic coming up here. But you look incredibly relaxed. Well, that's the whole idea. I mean, it's no good leaving your strength and energy in the, in the, in the dressing room. I want it in the, uh, in, the, in the ring, you see, so I feel very relaxed, yeah. So when do you start thinking mean thoughts? About an hour before. We chuck everybody out, and then I start thinking positive on the job. And uh, this is the famous robe that uh, you're going to be wearing out there? Yes, uh, that's my wife's dress designer who may have designed that for me. It really is. It's very me? heavy, lovely. Oh, I, I won't. Be able to lift it. Right, well, we're <laughs> But it really is wonderful, isn't it? Yes. That should give you confidence. Do you feel as though you need confidence, or are you absolutely... Well, you always need confidence. Mm -hmm. And you always need that little bit of um, encouragement from your personal friends, your close friends, which I've got, thank God. And um, really, that's it. You know, until the bell goes, uh, I need them very much. And then um, once you've got that over, then it's my job. Are you going to actually be going down to watch it at the ringside? No, tonight I'm staying up in the director's box because I promised Joe, you know, I wouldn't go down amongst the, the you know, the people down there. So, no, another worry off his mind, you know, if he knows that I'm up here. But you normally do, don't you? You normally go as close as you can, even though perhaps you don't want to. Yes, I generally do go down the front, but of course this is the first time there's been uh, an enormous crowd like this. It looks like there could be about 40,000 people here. But... Looking around you now, can you believe that it's really happening? Well, it's something that uh, both Joe and Frank Bruno have wanted for such a long time, but with this kind of weather, it seems that it's going to turn out to be a perfect night, isn't it? I think we're going to see a great fight tonight, I really do. The crowd will make it a great fight, and I think both boys are out there also to make, uh, make it a great fight. Barry, you're the person responsible for all those people being there, bums on seats. Well, I'm, I'm just very pleased to see them all there. It looks like being a fantastic evening. The atmosphere, well, you could, cut, you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. I think the atmosphere is something else. The last big main event I did, open air, was um, at QPR, McGuigan, which was something special. But tonight, this is really fantastic. Not long to go now. Yes, the great hype is about to be... Who's going to win? I've, I've been supporting Bruno from the off, you know, and uh, one paper said the only man who's got a good word to say for Frank Bruno is Derek Jameson. But I noticed the betting has swung round to Frank. But you still couldn't say with any certainty who's going to win. It's a great spectacle for London. Great. And uh, we'll all enjoy ourselves, won't we, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Bruno will win, I think, yeah. <laughs> Definitely win. Everyone's rooting for Bruno here. Of course they are. He's a Londoner and I'm a Londoner, so he's got him. Do you know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> it's a fabulous atmosphere. It's going to be equal to any football match I've played in. Uh, and we're looking forward to a great fight. I must say, the, the crowd has, has come and uh, it seems very volatile. And uh, it, I'm sure it will give it uh, the lift that the, uh, the big fight uh, deserves. Who do you want to win? Um, I'm going to keep it quiet. But I want, I want, I'd like to see Joe Bogno win, but... I'm very good. Do you know you are the first person here tonight to say you wanted to see Joe Bucknell win? As long as you keep it quiet, because if they know I may have to run. I won, I am the second one. I want to see Joe Bucknell win. The night out with the lads, and I always love a good fight. I don't know whether it'll be that, but you can hope. I saw Joe Bucknell hit Muhammad Ali with something that would be like me hitting, hitting you with a Pontiac. So, Pontiac's an American car, by the way. Um, it's got to say, Joe Bucknell. Hello, London. So very much the hero of the night, Frank Bruno, with the crowd anyway, wearing these pink caps in the stands. And that uh, heralds him in as the original Jack Solomon's fanfare, right back to the 1940s when they had uh, Bruce Woodcock and Jack London and Freddie Mills and Len Harvey. But they boxed in the afternoon here on the Tottenham Hotspur football ground. And uh, so saw those fights, and if they live up to those, we'll be quite satisfied. And there was a, a minor one once between Terry Venables and Fred Callaghan, but that was on the pitch. So there you are, very much the betting favourite. Uh, official bookmakers in the stands now have gone three to one on Bruno, five to two against Bugner. And there he is now, trying to upstage. Uh, well, I would think the wrestling world, but uh, he wore this when he fought Great Page in his last fight, Bugner. 
scheduled then for 12 rounds. And the Australian flag, obviously, now that he's an Australian citizen, a Hungarian born Bagner, he came all the way from Jogged to St. Ives, America, and now Australia. So it's a, a very cold night indeed, down to 42 degrees as we await the anthem. setting indeed here on the Spurs ground and uh, a real good debut in the big time for Barry Hearn's introduction to boxing promotions with his associates Terry Lawless and Mickey Duff. And gentlemen please, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Duff, Barry Hearn and Terry Lawless present the main event of the evening, a 12 rounds heavyweight contest of three minutes each round, an eliminator for the heavyweight championship of the world. Sponsored by Makita Power Tools. Between and in addition to you, the former heavyweight champion of Great Britain, the Commonwealth and Europe, Joe Bugner. And in this corner, the former heavyweight champion of Europe, Frank Bruno. <laughs> the officials for this contest, appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, your referee, Mr. John Cole of Wolverhampton, your timekeeper, Tom Powell, and your steward in charge, Mr. Bob Graham, thank you. So the tail of the tape, I think, says it all. 26 and a half pounds difference there. Heaviest ever for Joe Bugner. And a lot of it probably shows in that waist measurement, doesn't it? 40 against 33 for Bruno. But he's, uh, at least Bruno's got bigger fist at 14 against 11. So the talking's done now. And certainly Bugner's put on a good talking act. And Bruno here... He's just shown a bit more needle than I've ever seen him before. And I've followed now Bugner for 20 years. Is he going to try and come out and do, as he did with Richard Dunn, a one-round stoppage? Well, the old pacifist Bugner's not there anymore. They've uh, 
They've geared him up and he's coming in with his head a bit dangerously too, Jim, isn't he? He's very dangerous with his head. I think Bugner's plan here, Reg, is to try to intimidate Bruno. Every bit of strain and pressure in this fight tonight is on Bruno's shoulders. And I think Bugner, being experienced, is going to try to exploit that a bit. He's going to try to put him under pressure. He won't keep this pace going. Bruno just wants to be nice and careful in the first round. Slam some jabs into that big face of Bugner and just take his time. Don't take any chances, but Bugner's trying the old man trick at the moment. Well, kidology can go a long way in boxing, but in the end, you've still got to take the whack on the chin. But all the criticism aimed at Bugner over the years, it's the one thing he's always had is a, is a stout chin. Some good solid stuff coming in from Bruno. Now remember, he fought extremely well in the World Championship bit against Tim Witherspoon in the early part of the fight. And Witherspoon, uh, with respect to Bugner, really is a class above Joe. Bugner, of course, known for that uh, gift of the left jab, but Bruno actually hits very powerfully with a pole of a left hand punch. And I checked that with his opponents. They said it really does shatter you with the first few left hand jabs he catches you with. See, just the old flurry in Butler, just the same, isn't it, Tim? He's not levering into those, not turning his body into those punches. Yeah, those are not really fighters' punches, those are little uh, swinging arm punches. But with 18 stone behind them, okay, you don't want to take too many of them. But uh, I think the first couple of times Bruno lands this big jab of his. Uh, we'll see Joe thinking about a little bit of defence again. But he's doing the right thing, he's trying to intimidate Bruno, but thankfully it hasn't worked, the Bruno's looking nice and calm. Well, they've got to warm up here, it's uh, the nippiest night uh, I've covered in uh, outdoor boxing, obviously. And the way it's going, even if they paid £100 for the ringside here, and the cheers from the stands there, they wouldn't mind uh, if Bruno knocked this fellow over in the first round. They're certainly giving him enough encouragement. So the countdown for the end of the first anyway. And the steam is already showing now. And they've got to work up a full head of steam, I would have thought. After the bell, a little bit of needle going in as we thought. John Cole from Wolverhampton did well to get in there. And there's the crowded corner of the lawless camp in the black that we used to with Lawless in the middle George Francis on the outside and Frank Black the old firm they've worked for, with Bruno more or less from the start although Francis came in a bit later so Jim the, this was the start of the, the fight looking in replay now now he yeah, rushes well, in with the head Bugner come out to try and intimidate look at the head now here now thankfully he didn't uh, keep on doing that as the round went on but he tried to intimidate Bruno it didn't work I think the most significant thing in the first round was that Bugner's jabs are falling short and Bruno's wearing. That's a little bit tight before fights Bruno, but he says he hasn't done too much for this one. He's felt great. Second round then. Now, we don't want to see Bugner, as I say, so big. He says, don't worry too much about the weight. I'm a big lad. And at 37, he doesn't want to dry out too much to try and prove anything. He weighed 17 stone 10 for his last fight with Page, so he's, uh, he's added quite a bit there, really. Uh, three wins in Australia against, well, X-rated, but really retreaded Amer Australians, uh, Americans, I should say, in Australia.
touch as well, but they didn't go down from that really because the referee was just between them. Oh, he's opening up well now, Bruno, right above our commentary position. We can hear those and almost feel them sinking in, Jimmy. Well, Joe is not allowing the fight to go his way. Frank is dictating the action at the moment and uh, really looking good. from Frank there, he dropped his hands and left his chin up in the air, but uh, Joe didn't have the power there to make him pay for it. We know Frank's technique still needs a little bit, uh, there's, there's big Joe complaining, that's a good sign for Bruno. Yeah, just uh, take a couple of little rabbit blows around the neck there and uh, the referee just waving to Bruno's corner, keep quiet. But as you say, when they moan a bit, then they're just getting shown a few distress signals in the fight game. Then of a scheduled 12 with no championship at stake and really no official eliminator tag but it's always been my contention that every contest is an eliminator because the losers eliminated Bruno's con content with the same pattern, isn't he? I think it's been drummed into Big Frank tonight that uh, Bruckner is a great survivor and uh, he must pace himself because he must have plenty left in the last third of the contest because everything Frank has done tonight has been carefully controlled, it's been thought out, he hasn't done anything wild when he's been put under any pressure, he's used a little bit of safety first, he's grabbed the hold and it's been a good performance all the way around, well thought out. The only time Frank Bruno has been the distance is a 10-rounder against the American Phil Brown. And that's in a winning fight, of course. The only loss is Bone Crusher Smith and Tim Witherspoon. certainly hasn't uh, come to take the money and run, that's for sure. He's taken his... shipped a bit of punishment along the way there. <laughs> Not too many people have bloody Joe Bugley's nose over the years, Jim, but that, uh, presumably the left-hand jab has done that. It's been as reliable as a Greenwich time signal at times that. There he goes again. It's a long time since Gooden has been asked to cope with a jab like that coming at him. If you look at his uh, opponents over that, you look. Yep, and he's down. He clubbed him with the right hand and he's, he won't go down, Bugner. At that point, he didn't even put the knees on the canvas. He tried to absorb the punches and that was a pretty brave effort of his, perhaps foolish. And he's getting seven, eight, nine. And he's going to let him box on and he's pinned in Bruno's corner and it won't go surely now. The towel has come in from the Australian's corner and Butler doesn't know why at that point and he's, at least he's had the professional's pride, Jim, of staying on his feet. That I handed to him. He took a lot of stick there 
And I don't know whether it was his wife who made the cornermen do it or they did it under their own steam. Probably they did. They threw the towel in. The referee stopped it at that point anyway. Yeah, well, a good performance, a good effort from Dugna, but let's talk about the man who's just really impressed everybody. Big Frank Bruno has finally come of age. A real professional performance from the first punch to the last punch. Big Frank did everything right, he did nothing wrong. And a long last Britain as a heavyweight, we can be proud of and we can, okay, we're not going to talk about beating Tyson, but at least we can be proud and put him in there and let him have his chance. Thank you, darling. All right. Well, you know, I'm, obviously I'm a little bit disappointed, but I must give credit to Frank. He did a wonderful job. He finished the job off professionally, and uh, no tears dropped lost. You know, I mean, he did a good job. That's it. You did what you were Well, I tried to do what I wanted to do, but I didn't come off. But credit goes to him. He did a good job. Thank you, love. Thank you very much. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Are you right? Fine, yes. How did you feel watching it? Well, I always hate watching it, but I have 100% confidence in our corner men, and so he's not hurt because uh, they promised me if anything happened like that, they'd throw in the towel, which is fabulous. And how is Jay? He's fine. He's got a little tiny mark on his nose. And he'll probably end up with a black eye or something, but he's fine. And being a good wife, how are you going to sort of lick the wounds and make him feel a bit better about losing? Well, yes, he's fine. He, he's very proud of what he did, and the fact is, uh, Frank Bruno was much better, and it was a very good fight. I'm glad it's over because now. No, I know it didn't have anything no, to do with me. Do you regret it happening? No, no, because now he will retire satisfied. Hello there. I feel beautiful on top of the world, you know, on top of the world, to be honest. Um, I'm not a man of giving much verbal. I just want to go in there and do the business, and I've done the business. And I just thank God. Yeah. Um, not really. I just wanted to pace myself because I knew that he's waiting for me to time myself out, so I had to pace myself. You know. Um, when I was, when they stopped the fight, when they chucked in the towel. Well, there you are. It's all over, Barry. Well, yeah, it's what an exciting finish as well. Fantastic night, what can you say? It's a sense of anticlimax in some way, really, because after all the build-up and everything, it's uh, strange to feel that it's all over and the argument's been settled, you know. What, what did you feel during it? Well, I don't know, it was such an exciting fight. I felt, you know, it's uh, waited such a long time for it to happen, you know, so was I was just enjoying it. Was there one crunch moment where you thought, <gasps> No, not really. It was, I can't really describe it. It's very difficult to explain because I thought, I was so impressed with Joe Bugner. You know, he came over here to have a fight. He didn't come over here and he trained hard and he fought as hard as, you know, for, as, hard as he could. And I can imagine the weight that came off Frank Bruno's shoulders when he finally went down, the relief of knowing that he was the man, you know. Have you had a chance to talk to either of the lads? Well, just to say well done, I thought you we were both great. You know, I thought both of them were tremendous professionals and uh, great athletes and a credit to their sport. It was a part of my life, you know, I couldn't have walked the streets tonight if Joe would have beat me. He's a very good, experienced guy. A lot of people knew he was experienced. They knew it was a good fight. A lot of people thought he was going to beat me tonight. All of England was on, <laughs> on my back and I had to knock him out and I did knock him out. And this is all um, for people, a Christmas present for everybody. But I thank God, I thank my manager Terry Lawless, I thank George Francis, Frank Black, I thank everybody, especially Barry Hearns, for giving me the opportunity and thank Joe Bugner.